All right, guys, this is our conveyors that we had set up on the previous video. And now we're going to get this pallet to go forwards over to this turntable. Once it gets on this turntable, we're going to turn 90 degrees and then we'll have the pallet move forward onto this conveyor. And when it hits this limit switch right here with this diffuse sensor, then it'll stop there and then turn the red light back on. So right now I've got uh, some additions to the conveyor. I put in a control panel here and I've got a, uh, a start and a stop button. Let me just roll back here. So I've got a stop button here with an illuminated stop light. I've got a start push button with an illuminated light. And then up above, I've got uh, a stack light here with a red, a yellow, and a green light. And for now, I'm going to make use of the red and the green light. Whenever this red light's on, this guy's on. And whenever this green light is on, then this green light's on. All right, guys. So I'm in the, the simulator mode right now. I'm playing right now. And if I bring up the file and drivers, you can see that I'm tied into my Siemens Step 7 1200. There we go. So there's all my inputs. There's all my outputs, which we'll go through in a little bit. And you can see that I'm currently talking to the PLC. Okay, so let's see if this guy works. So we'll back up a touch so we can see everything rocking and rolling. I'm going to press this start push button right here, which will start the sequence. Cool, eh? Now that looks nice and simple, but that took me forever to figure out. So again, let's uh, turn on the start button and we'll watch what's happening here. So right now you can see that this limit switch right here, if I can scroll over, there we go. This diffuse sensor right now is sensing the pallet. And if we scroll back and I hit the green, the start button, the green light will turn on. This conveyor will turn on. And when it gets here, you'll see that this diffuse sensor turns on. There you go. And then the turntable is moving forwards. Then the limit is moving 90 degrees. And then when it hits this diffuse sensor right here, there we go, then it turns everything off and allows it to reset the animation and start again. So this program is awesome in that it really pushes the, the limits of your programming. Like I have limited programming skills. Um, and each time that I try to build up my circuit, it, a certain portion works, but then, you know, I run into some problems. So I make the next portion works, which screws up the first portion. So it, it really works and it, it, it reacts the same way as it would out in the field. So let's see if we can slowly build up this circuit that I've done here, or I'll show you um, how I've built this up. And some of you will be pulling your, your hair in that you'll see it the way that I'm doing things. You'll be like, why are you doing it that way? Um, if you see some issues in my programming or you see some better ways to do it, um, what I'll do is I'll take a screenshot of my program, drop it in as a PDF, and then you can see my program. You can go through it and you can leave some comments below as to how I can fix up my program. All right, guys, let's walk through this nice and slow. Okay, so I think what I'll do is I'll do two videos. I'll walk you through the program that I've written here, and then I'll build it up on the next video in front of you. So the first thing I've got is a standard three wire where I have a stop and a start push button and I've got a holding contact here. And this holding contact comes from right here. So I have an internal bit, percent %m0.0. .0. So this bit right here is just an internal bit. It doesn't do anything external to the PLC. It just turns from a zero to a one. I'm examining that it's a one, and I'm keeping that guy on with another path of logic. So just a standard stop start to turn on a memory bit to say I'm ready to run. And the thing that's gonna turn this off is when I get to the end. So when I get to this diffuse sensor right here, then the, when the pallet goes in front of it, this will turn from a zero to a one. I'm just looking to see that it's a zero. As long as it's a zero, then I'm in the ready to run state. As soon as the pallet gets in front of it, it will turn into a one. 
this will no longer be true and that will turn off my ready to run output. That ready to run output is being used in a number of places here in the program. The first place it's being used is as soon as I'm ready to run, then I'd like both of the green lights to turn on. Uh, let me just show you, take a step back here and show you my stop start station, and then I'll show you the green and the red light. So my stop start push buttons are right here. So I have a stop push button right here, and I have a light that illuminates when it's in the stop, kind of in the reset mode. Uh, I have a start push button right here, and as soon as I press that start button and I'm in my ready to run, then this light will turn on. And uh, above, easy now, above I've got this stack light as well. So as soon as this red light's on, this guy's on, which is what it's doing right now. You can see that these are, two are illuminated. And as soon as these green lights turn on, they will both turn on simultaneously. Okay, so as long as I'm ready to run, then both of the green lights will turn on. But if this is a zero and I haven't hit my start push button yet, then this will be true and it will turn on both of the red lights, which is the state that we're in right now. Okay, the next thing, if we follow down this uh, circuit here, is that I've got my ready to run. And once I turn that on, and the pallet is in front of diffuse sensor number two, then I can turn on my conveyor. Okay, so you'll notice that I have one other instruction right here, but ignore that for two seconds. As long as I'm in the ready to run mode, and there is something in front of this diffuse sensor number two, which is this guy right here. So let's just look at that guy around this side. So there's a diffuse sensor, and as long as the pallet is in front of it, it'll be a one. And so once that's there, it'll turn on my conveyor. And then I have another three wire. I don't like using the latch and unlatch yet. I don't entirely understand it. So I'm just using my standard three wire control here for the conveyor. And the thing that's gonna turn off the conveyor is this diffuse sensor number one. But you can see that this is an internal memory bit. So the next line down here is when it gets to diffuse sensor number one, which is this guy, right here so let's see if i can zoom out here and show you that so when the the pallet gets to this diffuse sensor which is diffuse sensor number one then it will turn on a timer i need this conveyor to keep running for a couple seconds to push it onto um, this turntable otherwise if i just have it hit this limit here for this diffuse and then turn off it won't be able to push onto the turntable. So I need it to run for another two seconds. So as soon as I hit this diffuse sensor, it turns on an on delay timer. And when the on delay timer turn, times out after two seconds, then it will turn on this memory bit. I'm examining that the memory bit has not been tripped off yet. As soon as this memory bit trips off after two seconds, then it will turn off my first conveyor. Okay, so at that point, I was able to get the pallet onto the turntable. Uh, the next thing is to keep the turntable on until it gets to uh, this front limit, this turntable front limit. And if we zoom in here, um, there is a capacitive switch right there. And when the pallet goes over top of it, I wanted the, the uh, conveyor to turn off. Okay, so that's our next step here. So if we follow along here, I've now got uh, the diffuse center and the diff the first diffuse center. Let's uh, scroll back a bit here. This guy right here, once it's tripped off, then it's to turn on the turntable and have it rolling in the positive direction. And at that point, I have it keep rock and rolling um, until it gets to uh, that limit. So that turntable limit is right here. Right, so that's the front limit right there. As soon as it gets in front of that capacitor, capacitive sensor, then it turns off the turntable. Okay, once it gets to that front limit, which is right here as well, then this would be a one. And then at that point, I've got the turntable turning 90 degrees. Okay, once it starts to turn 90 degrees, then we can scroll down here. And we can find that there's a limit right here. So again, it's got all kinds of built-in limits within this guy. So we've got 
the <clears throat> the turntable which I would turn on and turn 90 degrees and then when it gets to this limit turntable limit uh, number one then I want the third conveyor this guy right here to start to turn on okay once that conveyor is turned on then I have a holding contact to keep it on and that conveyor is going to remain on until the pallet moves back and goes to uh, diffuse sensor number five as soon as it hits diffuse sensor number five this is no longer true and that turns off my conveyor okay the only uh, thing i had to add in was uh, this timer right here so when it got to the limit i put on a two second uh, timer there um, again because i need this positive roller on the turntable to push this over to conveyor number three. Okay, so if we follow this, I have an, a third memory bit right here, M0.3. And if we scroll up just a touch, then M0.3 is right here. <clears throat> and that turns on uh, my turntable plus. Actually, what turns that on is, uh, is the limit. So once I get to that limit right here, then I turn on the turntable once again. But I need a way to turn it off. Uh, and the way to turn it off is through this memory bit right here. So I had this guy, this normally open contact right here, um, and it didn't turn off my turntable in time. And it kept rock and rolling even after my pallet got to the diffuse sensor number five. I moved it from here to here so that once this timer times out after two seconds, then it blocks the logic continuity here on my holding contact and then turns off my turntable. All right, guys, so let's uh, scroll up here and I'll have it run a couple times on the, the simulator and you can watch the, the PLC program running at the same time. And then the next video, I'll try to build this up sequentially and show you where I came into uh, some issues and how I built up this actual program. Okay, so let's put this guy uh, into run mode now. So are we in run? I believe we're in run. Let's go into monitoring now. Just waiting for this to, to come in here. There we go. Okay, so when I hit this, uh, this push button here to turn it on, then you'll find that the ready to run is energized. You'll find that the green lights go on and the red lights go off, uh, and then I will scroll down and you can watch the next portion down here. But let's first look at this portion right here with our red and green lights turning on and off. And let me just zoom in here so you can see them changing real time. There we go, so I'll hit this push button right here. Okay, moving forward, but you can see here that the, the red light turned off and the green light turned on. There we go, and it's gotten to the end. And as soon as it gets to the end, then this diffuse sensor uh, stops this holding contact from being held. And then this is then true because the ready to run is off and the both red lights are now on. Okay, so let me zoom out now and we'll reset the animation here okay and i'll hit the uh i'll hit the push button again and then let me scroll down here on the program because we've seen this work now so then you can keep track of this um, as <clears throat> as i turn on the stimulator you'll find the diffuse sensor two is uh is tripped off you can see that that's true already um, the diffuse sensor one will then turn on this timer allow the conveyor to go for two more seconds to push it on to here. And then once it gets to uh, the end, then it will turn 90 degrees, turn on conveyor number three, turn on this positive roller, push it over until it gets to the final diffuse sensor. Okay, so let's rock and roll here. We're pressing the, the on button now. come to a stop. Beautiful. 
So I'll do it one more time. Otherwise, you won't be. If I make this smaller, you won't be able to see it. So let me just scroll down one more time here, and you'll see the the remaining portion here with the last timer. So that uh, when it gets to this 90 right here, then we have a two second delay in order to keep that uh, that turntable still rock and rolling. Let me make this a little bit smaller, and then hopefully we can see that all together there. There we go. Okay, so we can see all this portion right here. Let's reset the animation one more time. And you'll see that once it gets to uh, diffuse sensor number one right here, then there are two sequences that happen. Uh, the turntable uh, moves forward, then it's going to turn 90 degrees, then it will turn on again, move it towards this conveyor number three, until finally it gets to uh, this final diffuse sensor. All right, guys, last one. There we go. All right, guys. So leave your uh, your comments below. Don't troll the video, but give me uh, give me some decent constructive feedback. Um, tell me if you like this video, if you like the way that I presented it, uh, whether you would change the way that I presented this. Um, I wanted to go through sequentially uh, on this one because we built up this conveyor system. So I'll probably take a step back and start doing like a two wire and three wire forward reverse and stuff and then build it up. Uh, but I wanted to show you like, like all the different bits and pieces on this one. Uh, the next video though, before I go back to the easier stuff, I will start off at the beginning of this program right here and I'll slowly walk through how I built up this program and how I ran into each issue. All right guys, thanks for your patience. We'll see you on the next video.